This event has it all. Real cats, people dressed as cats, people not dressed like cats, acting like cats, and not enough space to do any of it in. That's it, that's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda, you're watching Small Entertainment, and I think I'm funny, and that's the important part. So today we are talking about CatCon, and so naturally I am wearing cheetah print that you can barely see, and also my background image is a cat. Um, I just searched judgy cat, and honestly I think that this is me. Like that's me as a cat. I don't know what this cat's name is. Watch it be a famous cat and someone's mad at me and then tries to copyright claim me. I go to quite a lot of events and not all of them end up having a full video about them. Typically it's just because they were fine, but like nothing, they're like, just wasn't enough there. I'll go to a great event and I will talk about how great the event is, but sometimes it's just like, yeah, this is fun, but like there's not enough for like a video, you know? And if I make enough videos where it's just like a meh event, then like, what's the point of this? You guys aren't having fun. So those are shorts and reels and things like that. But typically what really excites me about making a video is when I post that I'm going somewhere and my friends DM me and they're like, that's a thing. Yes. Getting that message, that story response from a mutual of mine. Oh my God. It's like cocaine for the soul. It like gets me so excited. I'm like, yes. Okay. Perfect. This is great. This is a video. I mean, I mean, I've seen the event yet. The event could be boring as hell. It doesn't matter. I know that that alone, you're going to click on that. So anyways, let's talk about CatCon 2023 in Pasadena, California. But stop. First, let me tell you about the sponsor for today's video, Lilo. That's right, Lilo is back, and this time they sent me the Sono 2 Travel to tell you about. The perfect companion for pleasure enthusiasts looking for pleasure and adventure on the go. Whether you're like me and you travel a lot, or you just have a summer vacation coming up, or even you stay home, but you don't want to deal with the big bulky pleasure aids that are out there right now, the Sono 2 Travel is perfect. With a compact and discreet design, the Sono 2 Travel fits perfectly in your purse, bag, or suitcase so that pleasure is always in reach. 12 powerful settings, Sensonic technology, and medical grade silicone, the Sona 2 Travel is perfect for you. Click the link in the description box to take pleasure on the go with you today. Thank you again to Lilo for sponsoring this video. I found CatCon when I was like, I don't know, I don't have a lot of events in August. No, I'm supposed to be taking it easy, but also like, <laughs> content. <laughs> I have a reputation now of being a YouTuber who does too much for mediocre results. And you know what? I take my reputation very seriously. So I Googled conventions in Southern California because surely that doesn't count as work if it's in my general vicinity, even if I have to drive a few hours to go do it. Here's the Eventbrite listing for CatCon. Let's talk about it. Saturday, August 5th and Sunday, August 6th, Pasadena Convention Center and naturally I'm a dog parent. If you can't tell by my home security system. Can you not? Hey, I'm working so you can have good treats. It's like Comic-Con, but for cat people. CatCon is a, the biggest event in the world dedicated to cat and pop culture. Your ticket includes access to all events, workshops, and seminars. Children under 12 are free. Catastic fun all weekend long, one of a kind experiences, dozens of Instagrammable moments, contests, giveaways, and many more surprises. Some cat loving celebs and your favorite celebra cats. Celebra cats. <laughs> I'm sorry. Every time I see the face in my periphery in, in the viewfinder, I'm like, I should do that face right now. <laughs> Lots more human and feline talent to be announced along with a ton of surprises. For the safety of guests as well as pets, anyone who arrives at the convention will a cat with a cat will be turned away at the door. There were cats there, but you could not bring your own cat. And what that tells me is that there is in fact an influencer economy within the cat world, okay? And so there are cats that feel left out and like normies and probably have uh, Reddit pages, subreddits, sub mouses. That's stupid. <laughs> I don't know. Sub meowits. Sub meowits. Where they uh, make snark accounts about uh, cats, famous cats. For the weekend, it was 79.22. And then on the 26th of July, I got this email. Don't miss out on the biggest potty of the year. Paw as in P-A-W. I think you get it. Hey, Cat Connors. We can't wait to see you August 5th and 6th at the Pasadena Convention Center. Show hours 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. But don't want to miss the ultimate cat lovers after party. CatCon After Dark. It's all happening Saturday, August 5th from 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Your CatCon After Dark ticket includes two drinks to enjoy while you rub elbows with fellow cat lovers and some of your favorite CatCon talent in one of Pasadena's nearby hotspots. And then also, um, I don't know if you guys know this, but it's um, August. 5 to 6.30 is nowhere close to After Dark. And honestly, I think you could have made it a little later and that would have been fine. This was a big deal. I had to click there and then enter a password 
and then buy the ticket. Uh, so I bought that. So I was gonna get at the convention center right at 10, okay? But then I went out to my car and I hadn't driven my car in like two days because I work from home and I'm self-employed because I'm a YouTuber. And um, I had a flat tire. I was slowly, so I called AAA, I had to wait for AAA, and they came and put air on my tire, and then I had to drop Hermes off at daycare because he's a menace and cannot be left alone because he destroys my couch if he does that and screams, and then I'm gonna get evicted, which might be the ideal thing to happen at this point, but I don't want an eviction on my record. <laughs> so I ended up getting to the convention center right around 11, which was later than I would ideally like because the event starts at 10. I'm a smidge later than I would like to be, about an hour later. But the line is still really long, which is surprising to me. We're interested to see how many tickets they actually sold for today. Yeah, they also moved the entrance. The entrance they're using as the exit, which I think is interesting. The last time I waited in a line like this at this convention center was for Monster Palooza, which you guys also didn't get a video for. But that line started before the event started. So I was confused why the event had been open for close to an hour and the line was still this long, not just wrapped around the convention center, but into the parking lot of the hotel doing zigzags. This guy pulls up every single convention at the convention center. <laughs> and I admire the commitment because it's 83 degrees outside right now. It's hot. It was about an hour, which is not good. And I did get a little bit, you can see it here. I got a little bit of sunburn and I did have sunscreen on. Unfortunately, there was a wait and some people were complaining about the line and all of that. So I have to make a note of the line because a few people that came up and said, hi, Swell, did you wait in that line too? Yeah, I have to talk about it. And that was for everyone. There was only one line for everyone, which I usually don't like. The second day there was a weekend or weekend pass line, but that those were people who already had their wristbands as well. So I just, I don't know. I feel like there should always be a separate line, I think, especially when you have people who still have not bought tickets yet, but then they have tickets up there and then you have weekend pass, the day pass. Even then, I mean, I don't know, this might sound horrible, but like weekend does not classify as VIP. If someone's only getting in for Saturday, I think there should be a separate line for them because that's one probably gonna be shorter. I know there's only a limited number of weekend passes tickets, but like you should get them in as soon as possible, especially when they're only getting in there for a certain amount of time. They're only getting one day. There should be a separate line just to make it speedier for them because they only have so much time. I have a whole second day to go and around and find out. They don't. So the first day I got in probably closer to 12 actually. And then the second day I actually got in like, I think right before 10 or right at 10. I was, they had a separate line for weekender the second day. So the second day I got in right at opening. So some of the footage of me filming the convention area, the expo area, you're going to see that it looks very empty. And that's because I'm the first one in there, but that filled up very quickly. And the rest of the footage that you see is what it was like pretty much 90% of the time. Okay. So people always like, to be like, are is there no one there? Oh my God, I'm crazy. I get there immediately as soon as I can. I am an anxiously early person by design and by trauma, okay? <laughs> I am there as soon as I possibly can. But the line thing is also important because it's a demonstration of how they did this incorrectly. One, they should have separated the lines, but also the way that they did the ticket grabbing and all of that, poorly done and they moved the entrance because the entrance that they were using uh, was for the rest of the convention center because they only used half of it. Considering this was, you guys called this the largest cat related event uh, in the world. Um, I don't know why you didn't rent out the entire convention center and you only rented half of it. The bigger half, you got the bigger half, but um, why not take up more space? Like considering how many tickets you sold, I never got the final number. I did, mean, I did mean to ask, but like that convention area holds a good amount of people, but then you have booths and you have cats and you have a little stage area that I think was a problem. I don't know why you didn't break things up and rent the whole space. And I get like, maybe you had less vendors than you were hoping to get and things like that. But like the crowd issue was a problem. And there was multiple spots where like four adults stopping to look at a booth caused a traffic jam in, in multiple instances. All right, to really show you how little space there is, there's no one in here right now. So this seems like a lot, but when you have more people in here, it's just really cramped. Like that's the entire aisle. There's just, there's not enough space, I would say, honestly, overall. So I get inside finally, and when you walk through the doors, they check my bag briefly. They just looked inside of it. My manifest app, hold on. I am a shining star that illuminates the world with its presence. <laughs> Let's rip into cat con. <laughs> They didn't really check my bag. They just looked at my bag and like my bag is pretty big. 
You know, it's it's like my little might be fake Prada bag that's like a little hand thing. It's got a level. They and I have it filled up because I'm I'm a girl. You know, <laughs> I got stuff in there, and they like just looked at the top. Like what? There, I'm not saying that I would, but like there could be a gun in there. <laughs> like you, I, it would fit. And I could cover it pretty easily. And I just think that you should move things around. I'm just saying, you know, like someone would. And then I walk in, they had given me the wristband. One of these is a weekend band. I was told this was the weekend band, but then someone else said this was the weekend band. So I think there was a miscommunication over which band went what. One of these was just, we can tell you of a ticket. And then the other one was, we scanned your ticket, you have a weekend badge. This was all I got. I never got an actual, actual badge. But once I walked in and I'd been given this early and they hadn't scanned my ticket. I, I just kept holding my ticket out, waiting for someone to scan it. So you walk in and immediately right in front of you is the welcome to CatCon sign. So you start to walk forward and then they're like, no, you gotta go this way to the left. And then there's another zigzag ticket line to get into, to actually scan your ticket, get a program, get the baggie. You get your CatCon baggie and all of that. But like people did just keep walking. So like that already you are people who like could have faked a CatCon bag. You guys did this poorly. You should have had a different entrance or something that led easier to it. Should have had a, maybe a, a line that blocks it off so that you automatically have to go that way instead of just one person being like, no, that way. Because if you walk with confidence, someone would have walked right past her and people did, I saw it. I think you guys did this poorly. And you also used the side entrance, which was connected to the one side that you guys were using. And you later did open up the front for an exit and you had it unblocked blocked off to have more space for sitting. But um, the main convention center entrance that usually all events use for the entrance, that was an exit only, which I thought was odd. And I was like, oh, of course, that's because you're using half of the convention center. Again, they're using the bigger room, but I don't get why they couldn't have utilized. Basically the convention center is broken up into two parts. There's the main side when you re walk right in and that has a big room and it is big. It's a little deeper, I believe, than the other one, but it is not as wide is my understanding. And I believe they also have more control over the lights and things like that in there. For example, Monster Palooza uh, typically uses it for like vendors that might want lower lighting or things like that. And then the other one, it's much more, it's much denser. They have a lot more space in there. I get my bag, I walk inside and immediately it's just like sensory overload. There's people everywhere, which is, Normal, it's a convention, it's fine. But I was just in an hour long line outside. I know there's probably another hour long wait for people behind me and I'm already sardined in here. You have a problem. I don't know who told you that this was a good idea to only use half of this convention center, but fire them. This is not a good idea. You walk in, there's a big, booth for someone who had a lot of space for their booth. You got the Adventure Cat set up right there. Apparently they got a Netflix show, Support Writers and Actors, Union Strong. Then past that, it's like more booths. And then it's kind of like a weird little zigzaggy loop. But then also the entire way around the convention area is a line of people for a meet and greet. So that's the meet and greet line. Who are they meeting? I'm very confused. As much as I love animals, um, I do think me doing a meet and greet for a cat feels weird. I like famous animals. And I'm not gonna lie, I cried when I found out that Noodles the Pug had passed away, okay? Was it a Bones Day or No Bones Day? Okay, I cried, I did, I was sad, all right? But that's because I had tied how my day was gonna go to an actual animal. <laughs> Fandom surrounding some of these famous cats is insane. And I messaged my friend while I was there, I was like, oh my God, does anyone have a podcast where they're like, talking to their cat and later I saw her and she was like, I'm gonna be honest with you, I didn't know how to respond to that. And I was like, that's fair. I would not know how to respond to that either. But also I feel like these people need a cat podcast, okay, where it's just someone interviewing different cats constantly. Is Does that exist? Is that a thing? I'm giving you that business idea for free. Someone do that. That's hilarious. Video and audio, Spotify will buy it within six months. Not even that, okay? I'm telling you that, that's a genius idea. You know those scenes in like uh, Wall Street movies where they do a lot of cocaine and they're like, what if we did this? I'm doing that, but without the cocaine. <laughs> that's just how my brain is. <laughs> I definitely think they should have done the meet and greets in another hall. There's not nearly enough space in here. It's not too loud, but it's a lot for a cat. Yes, there were people uh, in their fursuits there as well, as well as people dressed as cat girls and cat boys, um, some of whom were playing with uh, cat toys at different booths for photos and things like that. Do you, you know? There was uh, artists, like independent vendors, and then there was like cat health companies. Hey, we have a dewormer, we have a shot, we have a cat litter box, bunch of litter box companies. And so there was a lot of art and things like that. I bought a few things. I bought these 
earrings from someone. I bought this little, it's a little cat curled up, little, 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 little medallion. It's cute. There was a food booth inside towards the back of the convention area. And it was just like a booth. They had a few things here and there. And then that line was long. So I went outside to be like, oh, okay, there's concessions outside as well. So I got red vines and a diet Coke. I think they had other things, but it's just like, you know, it's convention food. It's never a good deal, <laughs> but also like the lack of chairs was bad. There's a lot of people sitting on the ground. And this is why I think for day two, they opened up the like, do not cross area for the entrance. Like where I said it was an exit only for the initial entrance. They also had that roped off to a degree with like a barrier. So they did take that down the next day and moved it over so that there was more space to sit and to exit so that people weren't exiting out where people were coming in. Uh, but there should have been more tables or something, especially when there was no other area for the convention. You know what I'm saying? Like there was no like across the way you're here, over here is this. Something that kept happening was that different booths, especially big companies were doing giveaways for a variety of things where you had to like sign up and spin and do all this stuff to get like maybe a free sample of food or like maybe a, a cat litter thing or whatever. These lines kept blocking more things because they're just was not much else to do aside from wait in line, whether to do a meet and greet, to go and see the adoption kitties, or, you know, potentially winning a free pooper scooper. There was just, just a line issue. It's the same thing that happened at VidCon. There's not enough to do, so it becomes boring for everyone. You can spend money and stay in line. That's kind of really it. When you first walked in, you have the big company, you have the adventure cat. And then right past that is the stage. There's really only one stage. And by really only, I mean, there's one stage. Again, one stage, little platform, and then like maybe 50 chairs, 70, 80, I don't know, not a lot, okay? Not enough is my point. When there's nothing else to do, to see, but this, um, and there was different workshops. So like day one, I saw one where it was a vet talking about the importance of like taking your cat to the vet, even if your cat seems super healthy. You gotta do some diagnostics. And my job today is to really make sure you guys stay accountable for your pet's diagnostics. You don't know what you don't know. Day two, another one that I saw before I left. There was a cat for Cats That Travel and it was a bunch of travel people who have famous cats that tr are known for traveling basically, which is interesting. And I really like that a lot as, as someone who does not currently travel with my pet, but would like to travel with my pet. If I can get him to not be a complete psychopath when he sees their humans and, uh, four-legged creatures and rolling backpacks. He thinks rolling backpacks are dogs. He's smart enough to know to ignore me and to not listen to commands for obedience training. But he thinks a rolling backpack is, an, is a dog. He's not street smart. What is that? insane? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> that was a, an interesting panel that I liked watching, but also the cats were looking stressed out the entire time. My point with bringing all this up is that something that really bothered me was that um, there was not any separation for the cats whatsoever. Now there's a lot of rumors surrounding and there's been rumors for years around famous cats and like, oh, you keep them drugged and things like that. And that's how they make that face. So that's why they're so docile. That's why they're comfortable with being in public and things like that, like this. I don't think that's good. Obviously, you know, you, your cat can be an influencer all you want. You don't need to put them through this. You know what I'm saying? Um, but at the very least, I think the event could have made it safer and better for the cats the best they could have done. So at the very least, you should have had that separate room or even what they do for um, Monster Blues as well for a lot of the bigger celebrity signings so that it's safer for them and it's a separate, more controlled area is they get the... Um, stadium space across the way and they use that for the photo spaces. It's bigger, it's a lot of space, but they could have utilized that as like another area for the cats and things like that versus just having like literal tarps in squares in certain areas where you could go and meet these cats in the middle of the expo hall with just a black curtain to do any form of noise separation for them. Like it was getting loud in there for me at times. I'm sure it was too loud for a cat, okay? Drugged or not. And these cats weren't doing very long sessions. Uh, they were like max 45 minutes to an hour, I think is what I saw. But still that's like a lot for a cat, okay? And so I think that moving the meet and greet section to at least the other hall would be good because then you can also control the lines better because then the lines aren't blocking other booths, the expo hall area as well. You can have them lined up in one, you cut the room in half, chop it, 
chop the room. One section is for lines. And then that way you can have a safer, quieter area between the meet and greet sessions where the cats are able to like be mellowed out with their owners and things like that. And it's more controlled. And then also if a cat bolts, you don't have to worry about people panicking and trampling the cat. At one point during the traveling cat session, the moderator said, you know, if a cat runs, grab it. Like, okay, I hear you. But like, I don't know, some people's cats are really like Hermes, very comfortable with me picking him up. If you touch him, he's gnawing off your nose, okay? Like, I don't know, a lot of cats are very finicky and weird, especially when there's a lot of stress. You don't know how a cat's going to react. You don't know how people are going to react, even if they're like, oh yeah, I love cats, here kitty. Like, there are gonna be people who are also gonna like, oh no, I don't wanna step on the cat, and then they bump into someone else, and then there's panic, and now there's a problem, you know? So I think that there should have been a separated area for the cats for everyone's safety, not just for the cat's comfortability, but also for overall safety purposes. There was too many people in this space. There were times where it was straight up like people wanted to go and loop down one aisle for artists. And it was like, oh, nope, not going to go that way because it was sardines stacked in there. Like Anime Expo, their aisles were pretty spread out. These were not nearly as spread out. And thankfully there weren't like big pieces of cosplay and things like that. But like people were dressed up as well. And there were people in their fursuits and most of them had clips that said like low visibility and things like that, which is good. But, um, you know, there's just, uh, it was a safety issue. The first day I was like, I think I need to go eat something or something. Cause I, I kept going outside. And I, when I went out to the little outdoor area, the, not the outdoor area, the atrium area outside of the actual hall itself to have my little snack and my soda, I felt better. And then I went back inside and I was like, why am I feeling so out of it? I was feeling dazed. I was like, am I just tired? I think again, it's like, I don't think I was getting enough oxygen in there. I think I was feeling flippant under oxygenated and that's why I felt all weird because I left I was like I'm gonna go eat something somewhere else and go walk around the paseo or whatever which is the thing across the way and I instantly felt better so I truly think there was an oxygen issue in there okay there was something going on my point is is that there was too many people in there for the space that was in there so that was day one okay I left early and I left and I was like okay I'm gonna go back anyways and I went and had lunch with Anarchy and Chris and then uh we they were like oh well we'll walk you to the after dark thing so I was like yeah that's at five so I want to go to that two or three is when I had left the convention center. And so we went and had food and then they walked me and I got there right around 5.05, okay? I can't do a full review of this because I didn't stay. I walked in, showed them my ticket, got my two drink tickets, looked around and left <laughs> because this was awkward. It was weird. The energy was weird. The vibes were weird. I don't know what this party was supposed to be, but it was awkward. Um, and I know it had just started and, you know, People are still walking over and stuff, but considering it's only an hour and a half, you guys should have had something going on or something. You basically paid to have free access to the the, the restaurant. Like that was really it because the group that was in front of me was like, oh, do you want, do you want to sit at the bar or do you want a table? It's like, what? Like people are clumped together in their groups. Like you're not mingling, there's nothing happening. And I get it if like, oh, the employees that were supposed to be working it like weren't there yet, but you should have had someone there. The event, again, an hour and a half, it's five, 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 10. I left right after that. Like something should have been happening. So I can't really do a full review. I just thought it was awkward. And so I left because I was just like, this is not fun for me. So I gifted my tickets to two people who came in behind me and I was like, here you go. Have fun, take these, enjoy, goodbye. Next day, I got there early, okay? I made sure I got there before 10. I got there probably right around 9.30. And as I was walking over, there was a woman walking with me and she was like, oh, like, are you a vendor or a guest? I was like, oh, just an attendee. She was like, oh, I, I'm an animal psychic. I'm doing readings. I'm like, oh, cool. And I had seen her booth the day before and she was like, S your cats are saying they have you wrapped around your little finger. I was like, sorry? It's like, oh, it's someone, they're saying you have your cat wrapped around your little finger. I was like, I'm sorry, I don't have cats. It's like, then who's saying this? And I said, I have a dog. That's who it is. And honestly, I don't know what she was doing, but frankly, Hermes 100% would say that about me. So you know what? <laughs> I don't care if I got played because Hermes, that is accurate. I went and walked around a bit more and it was much less crowded. Of course, the thing that I wanted to buy day one that I didn't get a chance to because the line was too long, uh, sold out day two. Got some more photos. Um, there was someone in a fur suit Okay, and this baby, toddler, infant, they were walking. Toddler, is that a toddler? Yes, I used to work at a baby and kids clothes store. I don't know why I don't know that. Anyways, this small child, okay, thought this furry was a real uh, cat and was very excited that this furry got down on the ground for her to play with. Um, <laughs> it was adorable, I'm not gonna lie, but I was also just like, this is 
something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The little girl was having a blast and the, the mom was like taking photos and so excited. So I think it's fine. I got a photo with two cats. My dad was like, hey, send a photo to me of you with a cat. And I sent him this photo. He said, nice. And I'm like, thanks. <laughs> he worries about me, but not in the way that I think most parents worry about their daughter. <laughs> so then I went back by the booth where I knew the animal psychic was. And I was like, you know what? Let's see it. So 45 bucks for a reading. And this has kind of become like an unofficial ritual for me now when I go to events. Like if there's a psychic, I'll get a reading done. I did the same thing at Midsummer Screen that I just went to last weekend. I got a, a reading from the Bone Witch. And then this started when I went to Paracon and I was like, I'm going to be a little shit and do a shenanigan and get a reading from every single medium and psychic that's here. And all of them told me uh, not different things. And you know what? <laughs> they all read me for filth, but they were all accurate, which is really frustrating and annoying when I'm trying to be an asshole. <laughs> So now it's become like a little bit of a, of, of a little bit of a tradition. And so she did a reading for me and we went off into a little side area for her booth and she kept peeking out to check. And she was like, I'm so sorry. Like my help quit today. I was like, what do you mean? Cause I'd been by there and I knew there was another woman that had been at that booth the day before. And apparently she came into a note on her display that said, I quit goodbye. And then later said like, yeah, I was too hard on my, on my knees. And she was like, I just wish she would have told me last night because I could have called someone and said I, it was when I came in and like, I've known this woman for six years. And I was like, oh, that's so bad. So she kept peeking out to be like, oh, that's $20 and like charging while we were doing our session. I have had cats when I left uh, my abusive home when I was 17, I had to leave them behind, unfortunately, because my dad was allergic. Um, and they have since been rehomed to a wonderful, nice old lady, okay? And so I believe they are still good, um, but I don't have any updates from them, unfortunately. Uh, but apparently, um, Matt which was actually my brother's cat, was the one coming through and telling me that he thinks that uh, Hermes is lame, annoying, he can't protect me, and that he might be gay. And she was like, what's your dog's name? I said, Hermes. And she's like, oh my God. Well, you named him after a Greek god. Of course, he thinks he's like the man of the house and that this is his domain. And of course, he thinks he has your wrapped around his finger. And then she was like, does he have like feathery, almost like feet, like fluffed up feet? And I said, why? And she's like, well, because like, you know, Mercury and Hermes, like they have the shoes. I'm like, yeah, I know that. And she's like, yeah, yeah, they really buy into that. And he thinks that those are his wings. I don't care if I was being played because this motherfucker will not let me trim his paws. What's so fucking ever? Come here, show them your feathery paws. I can shave the rest of him. He will not let me trim his paws whatsoever. Say hello. So I might've been played, but you know what? Whatever. It was fine. She also said the angels, uh, came through to tell me that Lisa will send me bluebirds or yellow finches. She says, normally people send cardinals, but she wants to be different. I'm like, okay, that does sound like Lisa. And um, she also said the angels said that her and I should be friends. So I don't know <laughs> what that means. So she may have played me, but I had fun with it. So it's fine. And Hermes, you, you might be gay. But also day two, I was able to go into the adoption area because day one, the line was really long. And uh, I'm not looking to get a cat, okay? But I do believe in the cat distribution system. If I'm ever destined to have another cat, a cat will be delivered upon to me. Right now I have Hermes, he's good. And if I get a cat, my dad will never come and visit me, which I call bullshit on, but that's just me. But I went and walked around the cat area. And this also was interesting because there was a lot of people here. They had it all set up for the cat adoption. And they did tell us like, listen, are you looking to adopt or are you just looking? And every time someone said, just looking, she said, okay, great. But like, there are people who do want to adopt. So like, let's just keep the line moving so that they have a chance to like meet all the cats and everything. So um, I feel like if I had asked, they would have let me hold one of the cats. But they also said like, don't stick your fingers in there and things like that. And they had people walking around in this space as well. But it was not far from, again, this is the back of the expo hall, but it's not super separated from the expo hall. So I just think that there should have been a separate space for this at least as well. You know, like the meet and greet cats are over here. The cat adoptions over here. You could have had that whole other room for that. This area was more separated than the meet and greet. So at the very least, these cats were more isolated from sound and things like that, especially against the back wall. There were tarps, but it was also like, they had like a whole separate room as well for like when you adopt, you could get a photo in there and things like that. So it was better than the meet and greets, but I do think they should have separated these cats away from the actual crowds more than anything, in my opinion. Um, throughout the convention as well, there were a few booth spaces that they had set aside for like sit down spaces. So there weren't actually booths there. There were just like little cutesy little sit down spots, which I think were good. And those were utilized, but I think that indicates that you needed more sitting space for your food areas. You clearly have an idea of the fandom because you have the entire walls 
of the convention area blocked off for meet and greets. So you know the size of crowds that some of these panels and workshops are gonna draw. So I don't know why you wouldn't have a bigger stage area or a stage area that doesn't block the entrance more than anything. Cause they kept saying like, oh, don't block the aisles, but where else are we supposed to stand when you only have 50 chairs and you're right at the front? At the very least you put this towards the back, move up the artist alley, esque area because then people have to go through the artist alley to get stage area. And then that gets more traffic for your artists and things like that because it's at the, the there's not enough space. Half of this stuff should not have been in here. The adoption of the meeting grade should have been in another room completely. And then that way you would have had more space for a stage. And the stage should have been, in my opinion, in the adoption area so that it was, okay, hey, let's all move backwards towards it versus blocking the entrance. You're lucky there was nothing bad that happened. Okay, okay. Anyways, that's going to be it. The cost of the ticket, I think for a two day is fine. A two day event is good. Unless you're looking for a specific cat or something like that, I think you can handle a one day. I think it's fine. But I, I don't think the two day is necessary worth it. You're not going to get more out of it by it being a two day aside from the separate line, but the first day it didn't matter. There was no separate line. So VIP is probably ideal. I don't know what else VIP got you because it had sold out by the time I got my ticket. I think you could have used more space. You should have rented the entire convention center. Oh, we didn't, we couldn't afford that X, Y, and Z. I don't know. You plan ahead, plan for the future. Okay. In the future, get the rest of the space, spread it out, have more space. You had options for the meet and greets and things like that. And you guys just stuck it all in one room and there wasn't enough space and there wasn't enough to do. So there was nothing to do but wait in line. So like you shouldn't be shocked that lines formed because there was nothing else to do. You know what I'm saying? Like there should have been more to do other than just stand there and wait in lines. Anyways, that's going to be it. Have you been to CatCon? Have you ever heard of CatCon? Did you see me post from CatCon and you were like, what? Do you have a cat? Do you, are you mad that I have a dog and I went to CatCon? Let me know, comment down below. Reminder, I have a podcast, a social dance podcast reminder that Swell Entertainment is now available on Spotify. This episode will be available, will be available tomorrow. God, reminder, I have merch. I'm sure there'll be something, some cat leopardy something type of merch, something goofy. I'll, I'll figure it out. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. If you also explore my Patreon, list down below. Like, tell me on social media that'll be all up here and that's gonna be a hell of a day goodbye like these cats are influencers give them the space they just <laughs> i'm sorry i'm kidding um I, I, but seriously like these are these are animals they should have quiet spaces and i get i i like that you guys had the smaller amount of meet and greet times but then you're also going really fast with the amount of people waiting for these meet and greets so you therefore should have more space for these cats to mellow out in that's my opinion. Thank you, Amy, Andrew, Alan, Awful, Aslan, BJ, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Crispy, Crispy, Crash, China, Corey, Daniela, 31, Don, Donnie, Elliot, Evan, Eric, Eyal, Ghostly, Hopeless, Homer, Incognito, Jasmine, Joe, John M, Jordan, Joseph, Justin, Kenny, Kim, Kristen, Lauren, Lamb, Lex, Lise, Louise, Mae West, Madeline, Matt, Matthew, Medic, Meme Lord, Michael, Michael J, Michael T, Micah, Nathaniel, Pat, Penn, Pink, Philip, Richard, Rob, Rosie, Red, Robert, Ross, Ryan, Sam, Serena, Skylar, Simon, Tasha, Timothy, Heavenly Plastic, Tyler, Tenzin, Tom, Tom, Thomas, Querty, Victor, Randy, Winter, Wendy, Will, William, Zendry, Zwing.